it's time to build the ultimate crop farm. Introducing Tower One, the only food farm you will ever need. It provides a seemingly endless amount of wheat, potatoes, carrots, and even beetroot. It runs fully automatically as it employs villagers to do all of the planting and harvesting and uses a laze to collect all of the items. Each layer produces about 800 to 1300 items per hour, depending on the crop layer that you choose. Each level can farm all four crops, or you can dedicate certain levels to a specific or select few crops to reduce the amount of allays needed per floor. On each level, you will need one allay for every crop growing there. You can also add in extra allays to collect the wheat and beetroot seeds if desired, and it works on both Java and Bedrock Edition. It should take about 10 minutes to build once you have the necessary materials. Wowie! This farm is awesome. How do I build one of these? How did you get in here? Well, I was watching you from your window, and, and the window was open, so I, I just jumped through it. You really shouldn't do that, but, uh, I mean, yeah, since you're here, let's build it. To start off, let's find a nice open area and clear out the trees. Now go ahead and choose a block somewhere in the middle, and from there, excluding the central block, we're going to count 18 blocks in each direction. And on the 18th block, go ahead and dig a hole and add a water source for all four sides. Now head back to the center of the farm and count 9 blocks away in all directions, including diagonals, and replace the ninth block with water. Now you should have 12 water sources down, like so. You'll know you've done it right if every water source has an 8 block gap in between them. Now head back over to the middle with the items displayed in my hotbar. Dig down 3 in the center and make a small 3x3x2 three three high room. This will be a very small collection area. Place 2 chests down with 1 hopper going into it and a trapdoor off the other side. And then we'll place down a temporary fence, temporary rail, and we can open up the trapdoor and push the hopper minecart into it. Then we can break out those temporary blocks, add in another hopper, break the fence and make your way back up to the surface, or you can place a skulk sensor just above the hopper in the central block of the farm. Now switch out your hotbar, waterlog the skulk sensor, add a temporary block, temporary rail, push the minecart into the skulk sensor, and then we're going to add the no block, and we're going to push it into the hopper minecart using a piston and lever. And we'll put another temporary block atop of the note block and add trapdoors all the way around and break out that temporary block. And that's the collection system done. But it can be easily expanded or upgraded to an automatic sorting system. I won't show how to make an automatic sorting system in this video, but there are many other great tutorials on how to make them on YouTube. The next step here is to add the walls for the farm. So what we're going to do is come over to the outer water sources. Anyone will do. Just go ahead and start adding in two high glass walls all around the outside. And just slowly but surely connect up all of the outside water sources. Now come back over to the center and place glass walls going diagonally from the center pillar in all four directions. Here's an aerial representation of where you should place your two high walls. Now let's place down the villager huts. You just need four composters and the rest of your trapdoors. These will prevent the villagers from using the composters, but allows them to remain as farmer villagers. To build one of these, all you need to do is place a composter above one of the four exposed water sources, place a temporary block above that, and place trapdoors all around that temporary block, and then remove it. Now we can start bringing the villagers in. It's best to use what I would call a clean villager, one that isn't holding any items, because if it is, then it doesn't work nearly as efficiently. You can get a clean villager from a villager breeder, or you could see what a villager is holding by using this command. Now that we have our four villagers in here, let's make the filler for our villagers so they can't pick up the crops of other villagers or too much of their own crops. You'll need 28 named seeds per layer. Spread them out into groups of four. If you did plan on doing multiple layers, you could name entire stacks of seeds so you didn't have to name new ones every time you built a new layer. So anyway, go ahead and name each stack of four seeds something unique. I went ahead and named them seed 1 through 7. Go ahead and set those seeds off to the side for the moment. And here's where we're going to make our final decision about what each of our villagers are farming. You will need three stacks of the plantable item for what you want them to farm. We're doing four different crops in this farm, but you could mix and match however you choose. So we'll need three stacks of carrots, three stacks of potatoes, three stacks of beetroot seeds and three stacks of wheat seeds so now we're gonna go up to every one of these villagers and give them in their first inventory slot the thing we would like them to farm so let's say we'd like this guy to be our carrot farmer we'd give him one stack of carrots and now we just have to go back through and give them one of each one of these named filler blocks. Now all of these guys can't pick up stuff that isn't theirs. Till up everything, and while you're tilling, fill up the areas with the rest of the crops you have. Make sure you're planting the same crop as the nearest villager. You do not want to till the immediate area around the composter on Bedrock Edition. On Java, there's no problem with it. 
But on bedrock, the villagers have a really hard time planting and harvesting the crops under there. Also, on bedrock, you will need one bed per villager. You can just place it on the outside of the farm here. So four beds total per layer. Once you're done planting and tilling all the areas, if you have any extra seeds left over after planting, just make sure to give that back to the farmer of the area. Now you just need to bring in the allays. They can be found in woodland mansions or pillager outposts. You will need one allay for every crop. We have four crops here, so we'll need four allays. And if you want to collect wheat seeds or beetroot seeds, you will need an extra allay per seed type. So we've got our four allays here, and now we're just going to give them one of each item. Potato, wheat, beetroot, and carrot. And now we can set these guys free here. And they should head on over to this note block. You might have to come and stand near it so they get attracted to it instead of you. Let's go ahead and make a tunnel so that we can actually get to the collection area. So go ahead and dig down three. And then anytime water is above your head, just put a trap door on the lower half of the block so that the water doesn't flow into your tunnel. And then that'll lead all the way over to the chest. Did I just see a sheep? Perry, what are you doing in here? Were you trying to steal my food? Go on, you dirty dog. Get out of here. Ah, oh, whatever. I think I'll just leave Barry down there to think about his actions. Now, if you are going to stack layers on top of each other, you need a lighting layout similar to this. So on top of the composters, you can put some sort of light block, and then two diagonal away from the note block. On the floor, you can put another light source. For every layer, you will also need to push a hopper minecart into the trap doors above the note block. Otherwise, the hopper chain gets broken. So how much can this tower produce? Over 100,000 harvestable crops every hour. If you could build this tower in real life, you could produce enough food to feed well over two and a half million people. That's like feeding the entire country of Botswana. If you've enjoyed the video, give a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for your time and goodbye.